To help illustrate the process of analyzing a culvert for inlet control conditions, I want to do a quick example. So let's say this is our roadway and uh, the brown line shown there is our embankment and the blue line is the flow line going underneath it. And so we need to size the culvert that will allow that water to pass under the roadway without overtopping. So we cut a section and show what our roadway section looks like at the crossing. There's the crown of our road at the top, the pavement edge on the, the line underneath. Uh, and our crown of the roadway is about 871.65 feet and the invert of the channel right now is at about 861.82 feet. So from our hydrology analysis our flow rate is 162 cubic feet per second and then our orifice flow equation has Q but we already know Q so we need to solve for H in this case so we'll solve for H and get this expression. The other challenge to our design of our culvert is that we also don't want to interfere with the road subgrade. So there's another foot perhaps underneath the roadway edge that uh, cannot be touched for fear of, of destroying the integrity of the roadway above. So there's our pipe selection. I'm going to assume that we have a head wall. So we have a grooved in pipe with a head wall which gets us a, a coefficient of 0.2, a minor loss entrance coefficient of 0.2. And this is a, a, an 84 inch diameter pipe, so one of those pipes is 38.5 square feet, and there's only one pipe, so that means the total culvert area is 38.5 square feet. I plug those values into my expression that I solve for h, and I get h equal to 6.88 feet. Now the first design criteria that you can easily see, uh, maybe this is specified or not, but we'll just check it, is if the head, the headwater depth, is less than 1.5 times the diameter of the pipe, which in this case it is. So that's good. But we need to find what is the water surface elevation. And in this case the water surface elevation is the invert of the pipe plus 6.88, which is the headwater depth plus the pipe diameter divided by 2, or in other words, 7 feet divided by 2. It's a fairly simple calculation. Go ahead and get that done yourselves. I get 872.32. Ah, oh, man, that is bigger than the top of our roadway, and water is spilling over. That's no good. So we need to do some revising here. One of the easiest thing to do is just use multiple barrels that are smaller. Uh, you can take that 84, shrink it down a little bit, use multiple barrels. I suppose you could pick a bigger pipe diameter and instead of an 84 inch maybe it's a 96 or 108 but when you start getting that high now you're interfering with the roadway subgrade. So let's put in multiple barrels. I pick 54 inch diameter pipes, three of them gives me a total culvert area of 47.7 square feet. What that means is, uh, well, let me change that unit. What that means is that we have a 3 by 54 inch RCP and that the area is already bigger than our 184. So using that calculation again, we solve H to be 4.48 feet, which is less than 1.5D, so we're not ponding excessively. What is the water surface elevation? 868.55. We're less than the top of the roadway, so we're not overtopping, which is very good. So we're done, right? Oh wait, is the multiple barrels now too wide? Well, how do we know what the width is? Well, as you might suspect, the width is at least three times the diameter of each one of these pipes. So, D times three, right? But there's also a wall thickness that we've got to worry about, and especially with concrete pipe, it's relatively thick. So here in this little expression I developed, N is the number of barrels and T is the wall thickness. So for a 54 inch pipe, wall thickness is five and a half inches. And the width of that area is 195 inches or 16 feet three inches. Does it work? Will that be too wide? 
Well, this is where you now need to transport this into your space, into your surveyed construction alignment and determine if whether or not there is enough space for that many barrels in your waterway. One thing that's helpful to check is what is the width of the natural channel? Are you installing something that is wider than the natural channel? Because if you are, chances are uh, you know, you, you're doing too much or that's not going to fit properly. You don't want to excavate out in order to fit water through a culvert necessarily. So here's some other examples. So we have an existing culvert that's a 4x4 RCB, so that means it's a reinforced concrete box. And there's three of them. So this is a 3x4 by by RCB concrete box grooved in with a head wall. Your job is find the discharge where the height is less than or equal to 1.5 times the D. So in other words, I've given you essentially area. You need to go look up the C value. I've given you H as being 1.5D. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you just need to calculate Q. Fairly simple example. Here's another one. Let's say we have a temporary creek crossing at a construction site. The flow rate is 78 cubic feet per second. And the contractor has installed or wants to install one 66 inch RCP that's got a protruding end grooved end. So it's a plain end pipe. Okay, from that, find what is the embankment elevation above the invert. So you're going to give me back uh, how many feet above the invert elevation is the, the pipe there. So try out those two examples. Uh, give them a try and, uh, and then post your answers as part of your lecture activities this week.